Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're fucking your reality once again. But this time we're doing it via the Mandela Effect. But before we get started... We're we'll fucking your reality once again. I How often that. do we fuck reality? Like a lot. Every, every Have week you lately. listened to the show every before? Week no, lately. no. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in this reality. Uh, so anyway, before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Texas Blonde. From the Wild Acre Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. And this is a 5.4% ABV. Yes. It's an awesome looking can. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's got blue bonnets on it. Honestly, that was a big part of what I got. Aren't those illegal to pick and draw? No. 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 I'm gonna and hit, draw? And I'm going to hit you. <laughs> the uh, the rare Texas you can't draw a blue bonnet rule. Maybe that's Mandela. Is that Texlom? <laughs> Texlahoma. All right, so uh, oh, Mandela shit. Effect. This is uh, this has been around for a while, but it's really been, been talked about a lot on the, uh, you know, on the interweb lately. Tell us a little bit about it, John. Yeah, so the the broad idea of the Mandela effect is the idea of shared cultural memories that are not backed up by history. Um, we we can you know maybe go through some examples. Okay, so I, I don't I don't guess I understand what you're saying. Uh, so it's the idea that that we all remember something that. Uh, we Apparently it wasn't happening. so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you, if you look back in, in in the actual you know historical records of the time, it it wasn't happening. Whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I first saw this, and it's, it's been a while back when I saw it, uh, and I thought, this is this is this is the total bullshit. There's no way this is a thing. There's no way. And then I got looking at it and went, fuck, this is a thing. It's um, a thing. It, it kind of screwed with my old head and i think the older you get the more it screws with your head so i, I will, let's let's see Probably there may be a reason memories deteriorate over time no 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 no. it's because you jumped through more realities it, it's all cern's fault all right <laughs> all right so let's talk about a, a few of these uh mandela effects um you remember that famous um line in forrest gump yeah yeah life, everybody knows that one yeah life is like a box of chocolates <laughs> I saw a meme with it once. Life is like a box of chocolate, and I've seen I've seen Tom Hanks say that line in in just over and over again on, you know, the Tonight Show and late night shows, and any basically any time he's in front of a camera, somebody asks him to say that line. But well, whether or not Tom Hanks said it, you know who didn't? Forrest Gump. Never said that. Never said life is like a box of chocolate. No. Now th this one's iffy, and, and there's a few that are going to fall in this category, where. They said something really close, and it's a kind of yeah. understandable. He said life was like a box of chocolates. Yeah. Did, 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 did he say it with a uh, with a draw or something where it might be easy to to miss here? It is. No, this? I mean I I watched the video. I mean it was very clear. Mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. Really? Yeah. I, I see. See, I, I. How do you remember I, that? It's a terrible movie. I can't stand that. Mm. I've never every, actually every, seen every, that Everyone movie. I know loves that movie, and I yeah. fucking hate it. Yeah, I'm it's a celebration the, of stupidity, and it's terrible. I'm kind of to the point of not watching it because everybody's like, it's so good, you've got to watch it. It's a great movie. So it's I, I fucking awful. It. It's fucking awful. The hero is, is an idiot who just stumbles Isn't into success. Isn't that normally the case? I hate that stuff. Like, especially I don't like in any, reality. I like, I like no show that celebrates stupidity. We should yeah. be celebrating intelligence and, 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 and courage, not stupidity. Because so. we do that in real life already. Well, we should. We no, should. I'm saying our shows should celebrate intelligence because real life celebrates stupidity. Uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, I guess. I guess. Uh, I guess I'm the cynic today. I guess after the last presidential election we could say that. But uh, The next one deals with Mandela, but I'm actually going to push that to the end because I, I, I think there's a little more that we need to talk about on that one. Next up, Looney Tunes. Yep. Uh, I mean, everybody knows Looney Tunes, and, and everyone knows how it's spelled. L-O-O-N-E-Y-T-O-O-N-S. Yeah. No. But it's not spelled that That's way. That's not how I remember it. I remember no. it as, 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 as T-U-N-E-S. Yeah. Well, there's apparently a large swath of people that think that. And, and this one's actually explainable because uh, there was a show later 
called Tiny Toons, mm-hmm. oh, and it yeah. was spelled yeah. T-O-O-N-E-S. Really? Yes. So Well, and not only that, but during the height of cartoons, they were often called Toons, the characters themselves, and it was T-O-O. It would make sense that it, 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 yeah. if it was a shortened version of cartoon, yes. Right. But in Looney Tunes, it really wasn't. It was a, it was it was right. music because of the music that was played on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think that that confusion is. I, I, I can see where that comes yeah. from. I, I don't I don't really see that as as. If you're of that school and there is that group of people that believe the Mandela effect is something where reality has changed and at one point this was real and now it's mm-hmm. not, I don't think this meets the qualification at all. Right. Right. Uh, you know. Uh, well, here's one that, that may be a little more surprising This to one you. pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> this one pisses me off. That that famous treat that we all got as kids when our parents yeah. didn't want to cook real food, Jiffy Peanut Butter. Yeah, man. They're, 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 Jiffy Peanut Butter was what my mother got. I can distinctly remember it had those big block letters, J-I-F-F-Y, across it uh, in different colors. I can remember this like it was yesterday. And you're telling me it didn't happen. Three out of five letters ain't bad. I mean, yeah. it was Jif peanut butter. It was Jif peanut butter. J I F. I just don't buy that. I just, I, 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 in in my mind, I, I mean, I understand, I understand the reality of it, but I just, I can't put my arm, my, my, my mind around that. I can look back in my mind and see the cabinet when I was growing up, and see Jiffy with those five letters that were all just a little different color. I, I can see it in my mind. Yeah. I, I wonder if um, I wonder if it's Skippy that I'm confusing it with. So Skippy there's Skippy, and, and then there's also their slogan: "Choosy moms choose Jiff." In a which, Jiffy. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so I wonder if that's some sort of. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Something to... is happening because all I can remember is Skippy peanut butter, Jiffy peanut butter, and Peter Pan peanut butter. That's all I can remember as a kid. Mm-hmm. And my mother got whatever was the cheapest. Yeah, been there. Yeah, <laughs> classic kid stories. We all grew up with these. The the Berenstein Bears. I fucking no. love Bernstein Bears. Bernstein Bears. It was a distinctly Jewish Bernstein. name. Berenstein. It was a distinctly Jewish name. It was Bernstein. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yep. I do. There there were no Berenstein I, Bears. I, I There's know Berenstein. And, and, and I yeah. read it, and it's named after the uh, the the person that created him. It was mm-hmm. his last name. Yeah. Uh, but I mean. It, I always called them the Berenstein Bears. Did you? I did. Um, and something I actually saw on this was interesting. When you listen to their intro song, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's got a it's got a twang it, on it, it. It does have a twang, and I think that makes it very easy to hear it otherwise. Yeah, it's because there's these... somewhere it's very clearly stain. Yeah, it, it's one of these Laurel Yanny things where if you think about one and listen to that twang. You can hear either one. Yeah. yeah. It's ambiguous. Yeah. And, and, you know, you've also got the situation where uh, you've got people out there now that are actually claiming that this was intentionally changed because of anti-Semitism. Yeah. That they don't I want that, that. They don't want that. Uh, you know, it's Why something does anti-Semitism have to uh, be in everything? creep into everything? You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm beginning to believe, you know... There are some strong anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. We've Mm -hmm. talked about them in previous Mm -hmm. shows. But there are also some really strong pro-Semitic conspiracy theories. Is that that a word? Anti-Semitic, pro-Semitic? Sure. Whatever. I don't think it's ever been used, but it can be, yeah. Conspiracy theories. Yeah. And pretty much if I just hear anti-Semitism... My mind immediately goes, okay, what's conspiracy theory here? Yeah. Like, I'm just yeah. ready to, yeah. to hear yeah. the crazies yeah. come out. There, 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 there are plenty of, of anti-Semitic crazies out there in the world, though. Yeah, but, uh, which makes it easy to, 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 to believe sometimes, yeah. you know, because you know they're out there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, no, Bernstein Bears. And to this day, if you ask me, I will call it Bernstein Bears. Yeah. Knowing. I, I, I ran into this one a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. And knowing it, I will still call it Bernstein Bears. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I had... All of the books, all of them when I was little. And I like picturing the covers, I see Berenstein Bears. Yep. Like, I do not see an A there, period. But like, I've, I've looked at them since because my parents still have some of them or did recently. Um, and it's definitely an A. But that's I don't not remember. What I, see in my I don't memory. remember reading them or anything when I was a kid. But I remember my sisters all read them, mm-hmm. so that maybe you know there's a generation thing there. So, but that's interesting to me because 
you, you know, part of this, the Jiffy peanut butter thing, I think to myself, well, that's that was when I was very, very young and my yeah. brain was very conditioned. Yeah. I was not very, very young when this was. I was, you know, a teenager, you know, right. a little, little bit older. Uh, and still, it, it has that effect on me. So, yeah. um, hey, before you uh, go to the next one, I, I, I got one I want to talk about. Go ahead. Um, because some of this stuff kind of kind of freaked me out as I was going through. I want to talk about Ed McMahon a little bit. Mm. Because... The WWE... No, no, not Vince McMahon. Yeah. Ed McMahon. Uh, uh, people of a certain not age... Not uh, McMahons. Ed McMahon was the... Uh, um, the announcer for the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson for uh-huh. years. He was the host of Star Search, and I can I can clearly remember the big deal uh, growing up that Ed McMahon uh, was the you know was the uh, I don't want to say host uh, spokesperson spokesperson that's, that's the word, celebrity spokesperson for Publishers Clearinghouse. Now, if you're uh, if you were born in the '90s, you might not know what that is. But if you were born in the '60s, '70s, or '80s, you remember those Publishers Clearinghouse envelopes just just filling up your uh, mm-hmm. your, your mailbox growing up. Uh, to the extent that that you know everybody's parents filled it out and sent it back. Some people bought the uh, the magazines to get more chances, but somebody was going to win a million dollars. Ed McMahon showed up. He, they bought time on, on on national television, and we'd show up. We, we'd watch it when he would deliver this giant check from Publishers Clearinghouse. Well, Publishers Clearinghouse has released a statement that Ed McMahon never worked for them. He mm. never worked for Publishers Clearinghouse, and that just freaks me, freaks me out. That 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 completely changes my whole childhood, because I can I I, I can distinctly I can remember the little envelopes coming with Ed McMahon's <laughs> picture in the top left corner for Publishers Clearinghouse. How am I so wrong about this, John? You know what? I can. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll go into this briefly, but I want to talk about the mechanics of 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 why that is later. Uh, Ed McMahon worked for American. Oh, I gotta go. American to Family Publishers. Yep. Which, you know, I've never fucking heard of American Family Publishers. I looked. You looked that up earlier. I have never heard of American Family Publishers, and yet, I've, I've got this. I've got this in my mind as Publishers Clearinghouse. Well, you know, and, and you know, you kind of mentioned this earlier, but it makes sense. You know, we have this um, uh, thing where. If you ask somebody for a crayon, or sorry, uh, yeah, Crayola, cr- Crayola, or better one, if you ask someone, you know, you cut yourself, you ask for a band aid. Band aid yeah. is not a thing; it's a bandage. It's a bandage, yeah. But band aid is a brand, yeah. and so now everything that you know covers your wound is a band aid. Yeah. Um, and Kleenex, Xerox, yeah. even to the point that, um, in a metaphor, your you know, it's just putting a Band-Aid on the situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, we're not even talking strictly actual <laughs> adhesive bandages anymore. Yeah. So it's a language problem is what you're saying. It, it is. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, Publishers Clearinghouse is just the generic term for, you know, weird lotteries where you where you subscribe to magazines. And Ed McMahon was such a famous name that you he did one of those he did publish his clearinghouse. So we put the two, two together in our, in our brains. So it's so funny because I was actually trying to look up who the actual spokesperson was for Publishers Clearinghouse. And they didn't have one, the did whole, they? I don't know, yeah. actually, because the whole first page of Google results. Now, this is going to be skewed yeah. because of the, some of the, res, the searches that I've done for the show recently. <laughs> but the whole first page was nothing but like... Proof that Eggman Man was with Pub- <laughs> Publishers Clearinghouse, and uh, the very first one, in fact, I'll show you real quick, comes up as if, um, as if it's Ed-, Ed McMahon. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to actually read on to show that they're actually linking to the American Family Publishers Wikipedia and pulling the information from there. But it looks, when you Google it, like it's Ed McMahon. Yeah. You know, and, and now I just learned this this morning, and it and it, it completely freaked me out. But I can guarantee you that if you ask me on Wednesday, you know, three days from now, you say, uh, "Who was the spokesperson for mm-hmm. Publishers Clearinghouse?" I'm going to tell you, Ed McMahon. Well, so, yeah, uh, as will uh, most people, uh, apparently. Yeah. but it's. Uh, well, let, let's. I think this is a good place to kind of get into some some mechanics here. What 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 is actually happening in our our mind whenever we do this? Yeah. Um, so whenever you whenever you form memories. There's a word that neuroscientists use called engram. And 
Whereas a memory is your experience in your mind of, you know, remembering something. The engram is the physical location in your brain where the neurons all connect and form the experience that you have internally. And engrams are actually built in such a way that closely related engrams are built close together. This is where that whole principle of if you want to remember something, connect to a bunch of things. Yeah, yeah, we all do that. Yeah. yeah. So not only connect it in your mind, but you physically connect it in your mind to nearby things. Uh, we'll go into a few more examples of where this kind of thing happens, but what probably happened is you can you have a section in your mind for weird lotteries where you subscribe to, to magazines. Ed McMahon's in there. And every time you remember, you go back to that memory, you activate it. And that stimulates growth. You're that, actually rewriting it. Possibly. So whenever it stimulates growth, there is the potential for things to grow across and rewrite themselves. Yeah. It doesn't happen every time, but... There is a potential there. Yeah, I was reading an article about this earlier that, that, that said that every time you remember something, uh, now this is one person's theory, he believes that every time you remember it, you're actually cleaning that memory out and you're rewriting it with what, what, what you know now. You're, everything, else, everything comes together and it's been rewritten. So if it's rewritten, you know, it's like if you get a, you get a bug in a, in, in, a, in a computer. If you rewrite that bug, it's going gonna, it's gonna to replicate itself. So you link these one time and suddenly they're linked forever. I don't know. I, that was one person's theory, but I thought yeah. it was interesting at least. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think? Is it, am I explaining that properly? Well. I'm kind of an idiot with this kind of stuff. So When you, when you talk about rewriting it, okay, so it would be like, it would be more like this. Every time you booted up your game, you were booting it, or any program on your computer, you were booting it up from the source code. So you had the potential to like fat finger some keys and edit the source code of your I, program. I always fat finger everything. And so with that, if it's it was funny too. <laughs> if it was in a write mode every time you boot it up, you can imagine if you played a game over and over, eventually some errors would start to creep in yeah. there. And the game may start to act weird. And so it's not that you rewrite it from scratch every single time you go back to it, but you're in a write mode. Yeah. Every time okay, you I think go that makes there. sense. I think that makes sense. You know. Uh, if you want an example of this, all you have to do is look at my show notes and all this all, all the crap that ends up in there because <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, they're always, well, that's because you're using voice to text. It's because it's faster for which me. Which is hilarious. It is hilarious, especially with my East Texas twang. You know, what? that's what this show has become now is is Mike explains something and then John goes, well, that's not exactly correct and fixes <laughs> it. Um, w- w- and I you, make dick jokes. Which is, which is why on Facebook we get we get messages from people like, like uh, I can't wait to see how Mike is wrong this week. We got one of those the other yeah, day. Yeah, I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, we got a show. And we will be doing the yeah. show. Yeah. I forgot who that was, and forgive me for not remembering, but uh, but I appreciate that. That was, that was pretty cool. I see it in my uh, head. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah. I see his picture. It was a, it was a great. It was a great. Yeah, uh, great it, letter. It was so. on our. Yeah. Um, it was on our our Patreon. I yeah. see his picture. <laughs> I, can't I can't wait to see name. how Mike is wrong this Thad. week. Was it Thad? <laughs> me too? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Okay. Hey, Thad. All right. Yes. Thank you for for being a patron, and we will be doing your show. Um, okay, up next, um, I, I got, what, about six to eight more of these? I, and I have a couple I'd like to talk about, too. Yeah, I was through. including yours. Yeah. I was including yours. So, uh, next up, that famous Snow White line. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's yes. the fairest of them all? Mirror, mirror? Mirror, mirror. Shut up. Leave me alone. I, talk- I am I am a Texas boy. She was talking to a female yeah. cow that was hanging on the wall. <laughs> mare, mare on the wall. Mare, mare yeah, on the horse. wall. Who's yeah. the fairest of them all? Oh, I, yes. I got it. I got it. No problem. This I've, one is so fucking cheap, though. I've for seen real. it so many times. Never got said in that movie. You're right. Yeah, But what, it was in the book, what which exactly, is why it's cheap. What exactly was said? Magic, Magic mirror. mirror. Magic mirror on the wall. Uh, yeah. That's pretty easy to explain in the uh, in the original Grimm's fairy tale version. Right. It was mirror mirror on the wall. In the and Disney version, mirror, they changed it. And has been mirror mirror in a billion other yeah yeah things. Yeah, I, portraying I, I that whole situation. I think this is easy to easy to understand. Yeah. And and frankly, mirror mirror is better than magic mirror. So yeah. you know, I I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna accept mirror mirror as a fact. Yeah, yep. I Might think as well. I think Disney should go back and edit the original 1938 Snow White movie and uh, and change it. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Or we can just let Sarn do it. Yeah, just yeah. remaster. I keep oh, yeah. teasing this. Okay. Yeah. But that needs to be at the end, right? It, it yeah. needs to be yeah. later on. Um, next up, this is actually a pretty popular one. Yeah, I don't get this one. The the famous genie movie Shazam. Shazam. With Sinbad. With Sinbad, yeah. I, I, I fell for this one. Did you yeah, fall for I this did one? Yeah, I did too. 
Uh, I the, totally, I totally. Yeah, like there, there are people out there that believe that in the 90s, uh, Sinbad starred in a movie called Shazam, where he played a, a, a genie. Uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas was the kid. They got a lot of detail with of this course. stuff. Um, because and, he was the kid in everything and, and, at that time. And, and Sinbad has come out. Uh, I, I love I love Sinbad. He, he came out with a tweet of it saying uh, uh, that uh, that while he was never, he thinks it's a great idea, and if somebody wants to make it, yeah. he's available. Yeah. I, I I think I actually saw it. Of course, this may have just been a troll, but I think I saw somewhere that they said that uh, it was going to be happening. That would be interesting. It so, would be amazing. That, did you see where College Humor has has played off of this? Yeah. So College Humor yeah. made the 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 April Fools. Uh, uh, where it looked like a VHS that had been written over yeah. the times, yeah. yeah. So proof that what it happened. You yeah. may be thinking of, and I don't, I don't really know because I haven't seen what you've seen. But actually, they are coming out here really soon with a movie called Shazam. It wasn't that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But that's a DC yeah. comic book hero. It's Captain Marvel, basically. Yeah. yeah. It's the old, old Captain Marvel. We don't say that Marvel. You don't has say it. Marvel get Marvel get in trouble. They they yeah. they bought the copyrights to that. Yeah. Uh, Yep. By the way, we should do a show on that one. That's interesting. The, uh, oh, the whole, the whole history story of behind Captain how Marvel. Captain Marvel was bought. We should do one on yeah. that. Okay. Uh, it doesn't really fit in our wheelhouse. We'd have to be a hard That's shot, fine. but you know. Yeah. And if we do that, you're going to have to subscribe on Patreon to, to get our oh, hard yeah. shots. So, um, but uh, yeah. Well, why is this? Well, this is this is convoluting some ideas. There was a movie called Kazam, I Kazam. believe, Kazam. with uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, playing a playing a genie, yeah. and at that time period, uh, Sinbad was massive, and um, always wore genie clothes. Apparently, it, or well, genie it, yeah, he wore clothes. those the, he wore those MC Hammer pants and stuff. That you well, know. and even like turbans and Sometimes. these like flowy shirts. There was um, there was a show or maybe like a short that he had on Nickelodeon or something like that. A special. He was yeah, a pirate. Yeah, but could have very easily. Like, and why Jonathan genie. Taylor Thomas? Well, because in the nineties he was the he kid was everything. in everything. Yeah, he was well, in everything. And, and there's actually one more thing to this because there was actually a Sinbad movie out at the time. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's like White House Kid or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, where he played the uh, um, the Secret Service agent yeah. guarding yeah. the president's son. So there was that movie, and White House Kid was in the preview reel for Kazam, and Kazam was in the preview reel for White House Ki- Kid. Yeah. So there was actually a picture of Sinbad on the VHS tape at the very beginning, which causes us to 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 to, to link yeah. everything. Yeah, uh, I didn't remember this. This didn't this didn't have any effect on me at all. I do want to talk about one that that I I learned about fairly recently. That uh, you know, as a as a historian, I didn't fall for. I I, I had it, but but I understand stand where, where it comes from. First mm-hmm. off. Just really quick, uh, I didn't. I didn't even bring this up to y'all, y'all ahead of time. So I'll just ask you, Kennedy assassination, right? Okay. Y'all have all seen the videos from in, in Dallas, haven't you? At yes. some point it's in class or something. It's been a while, but yeah, I've seen them. How many people are in the car? Four or six? Four. Hold up. Let me think. It's going down through Daly Plaza. It's right there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Four. So I, I know Kennedy and his wife are in the very back. Yeah. I know there's at least two Secret Service men up front. Well, there's Governor Conley and, and, and the Secret Service driver. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I want to say there's two more now, but I think he might be priming me. So I don't yeah, know. There's four. Uh, overwhelmingly, people remember that there were four drivers because we've been told, four people, there were six in it. There were six in, in, How the, fuck in the did car. they even fit six in there that were, car? Because in, in the seats, they there, faced each other. There, no, they're three, they're three deep. It's yeah, a, it's a yeah. three deep limousine. And in this car, they uh, you, know, you had Governor Conley and his wife. You had Kennedy and his wife. And then you had two Secret Service agents in this car. Wow. Uh, but wh- why, why, why would we continuously believe four? Well, I think th- th- there's a bunch of reasons for this. First off... Uh, all you ever hear about is the bullet went through Connolly. It hit Kennedy. Jackie Kennedy. Uh, it rushed up. So you you immediately hit this this, this four number in your right. mind. That makes sense. The second reason is that Life magazine actually ran a big center page image of a car with four four seats, two rows, and flowers inside it after the assassination. Oh. What they were actually running was a picture of the vice president's car. Uh, as it as it was taking getting ready to take Jackie Kennedy to the, uh, the to the funeral, to all this mm-hmm. stuff, but this big car with, with with four. But there's more to it than this. There are at least two museums in the United States 
that have replications of the car, and the car only has two rows of seats. It doesn't have three in, the, in, in these museums. One of them is a wax museum, a doll museum. Uh, I've forgotten what the other, other museum was, but they have these two rows of, of seats. Well, that would lead people to believe this as well. Hmm. The last one is, and this is, this is the one that kind of freaked me out that I wasn't aware of until I looked it up. When they did the Warren investigation of this, they recreated it. Mm-hmm. And they put Secret Service agents in, and they ran everything through to see if it was possible. And the film, film footage is out there. And in the film footage, there were only four people in the car. Mm-hmm. So, of the recreation. Of the recreation. But okay. why, why would the Secret Service, if they're trying to accurately recreate something, recreate it different than it originally happened? Right. So you start seeing all this, and it makes you, makes you think... Did something change? And there are people that look at all this evidence and they say, no, it was for the remnants of the evidence is there to prove that it was for and something has changed in the reality. Uh, so today we know that it's six. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting idea to me. Again, as a historian, I, I, I knew it was six because I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've watched it so many times. Mm-hmm. But I fully understand why people would say four. Uh, what do you think about this? I'm uh, shocked, although... It seems plausible to me, um, being born in the late eighties, that um, that my memory would very easily be incorrect about this particular thing. Um, One second, we have a loose cat. Yeah. Uh, so. Anyway, if you think that there's an issue with, the, I, I, I'm, do you think that's all it is? Is the fact that that. You know, we're just we're just misremembering it, or do you think there's something else happening here? I think we're just misremembering, but yeah, uh, I, I think this is probably we, we can leave the the rest of these off. Uh, but I think this is probably a good time to transition and talk about what other people. You want to talk about the beer before we do it? Yeah, we can talk about the beer before we do it. Well, I out. think we're we're at about that time period. Um, so we yeah, are I'm almost out. We are drinking the Texas Blonde by Wild Acre Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Five point uh, five point four percent ABV. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, you want me to start this one? You can go ahead. Yep. I, it's been a while since I've started. I like this beer. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, it, it, it's smooth. It's got a little bit of fruitiness to it. I'm going to take a quick sip here. Yeah, just a hint of just, fruitiness. Just a hint. Of, fruitiness. I don't know. It's not an orange peel. I don't know what it is, but it's got a, it's got a hint of a, of, of a citrus to it. Mm-hmm. Very, very minute. It's, uh, it's incredibly smooth. I like the creaminess of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of, I kind of like blondes, so uh, beers and and women. So, right. this uh, this meets all of my my needs for a for a summer beer. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would want this in the in the winter time. It's it's a little it light would feel for that. Weak. It would feel very very weak. Uh, but but you know it's got it's got a, a, a full feel to it. I mm-hmm. I'm a fan of it. I don't think it's so special that it's going to get a massively high rating. Right. But I think it easily makes the benchmark. Um, oh yeah. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm going to go 2-8. Oh, very nice. Who'd John? like to go next? Go ahead, Anna. Okay. Oh, fuck. John's going to fuck this up. So anyway, um, as far as blondes go, I think they've actually done fairly well with this. Um, it's nice and light. The mouthfeel is pleasant, though not overwhelming. Um, and I think the carbonation level is appropriate for the lightness of the beer generally. Um, I, I do recognize a sort of citrusy note to it, though it's hard to place, probably because it is fairly faint. Um, all in all, I do like it. Um, I think as far as a blonde goes, it is definitely above the benchmark. Um, I'm putting it at a 2.9. 2.9, okay. Yeah. All right. And then here comes John with the torpedo. Yeah. I think you guys are crazy. You are crazy. This is a great blonde. Uh, this is probably the best blonde I've ever had. I'm I'm not a big fan of blondes for anyone who listens to the show. Yeah. Best blonde you've ever had. We had the best blonde you've ever had like a few weeks ago, and it was better than this. Well, I'm talking the, about her. I had the best blonde I ever had at a concert in 1987. I'm just saying. That's my uh, memory. <laughs> <laughs> no, what blonde are you talking about? It's a good about? concert. I don't remember, but I remember having the conversation. Okay. I think she's Mandela affecting yeah. over here. Anyway, so but no, I mean this is this. I, I can't think of a better blonde than this. Uh, I'm I, gonna, I would agree. I just don't think that blondes are as good of beers as other beers. I'm giving it a three seven. Three seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, but I want to. I want to look at so something. I'm inclined so not to Anna, even record Anna, that. Anna, 
Do you do you do you just give John cocaine before he comes on the show sometimes? And everyone on Untapped and everyone on Beer Advocate. Want to know what those are? Yeah, what is it? Untapped, 3.6. Beer Advocate, 3.9. Okay. You shouldn't look at those before you make up your I did. thing. <laughs> I, did. I did not. Oh, Lord. I All came right. up That's with their number. That's fair enough. That's fair up. enough. Uh, uh, I think if I was rating this as a blonde, I would have rated it higher, but I was rating it as a whole beer, and I don't. I, blondes aren't, you know, I like them, but they're not. A blonde is never going to do as this, well as a stout. For, this is one of me. those beers. Now, I'm not going to say it's my favorite beer, but if I looked down in a cooler full of beer and I saw these, this would be like in the, oh, mate, I might have one of those. I'd, you know, see what else is in there. I'm probably not going to pick it up before a buried hatchet or, you know, something else. But it would definitely be in my, okay, I'm going to choose between these beers. Now. I'd take it with me to the beach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So I actually would love, I know that one of the shticks on our show is, um, you know, trying a new beer every week. But at this point, we've been doing this for three and a half years, and I kind of want to revisit some of our. Oh, I think beers. I think we would fuck it all up. I want to. Isn't that what the New Year's show is? I, I, all right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna reach back for the New Year's show, and try to get some stuff from the very first season. Oh God, I think uh, I, I think our our tastes have changed. Because I remember loving Buried Hatchet, and then I really liked it again when we were at Texas Beer Camp. Um, rest in peace. Ah, uh, so sad, so I sad. Know. Moment of silence. I know. It's over. Okay. <laughs> the silence doesn't work well on, on, on podcasts. That is true. But um, I would be interested to try that and some other ones like it. See where they stand. I'd like to try the Duchess again. That's just because... I, I have recently. Yeah. I haven't tried it in a long time. It was good. It was uh, It was not as good as I remember, though. Same. Yeah. It was good. And, 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 and Toa Pistolas, I'd like to try that again. Oh, that one's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Fuck date lawnmower. Fuck date lawnmower. Uh, um, I think this gets you going in the dire- in the right direction if you have somebody who's a fan of light beers. Um, if you have somebody that you are trying to bed who um, is, of course, I don't know why you'd be trying to bed this person. Are you but- an eighty five year old woman trying to bed? If you're trying to bed someone, oh, fuck off, Mike. If you're trying to bang, is that better? <laughs> if you're trying to smash somebody, you're who, gonna lose your AARP membership. I'm telling you, I'm gonna I'm telling, stab it's over with everybody. Um, anyway, if you're trying to smash somebody who likes the mass-produced um, this water is beers, the, the, this is a good transition into taste for them. Um, although, honestly, I don't know why you'd be trying to smash those people to begin with. It may be hot. <sighs> I'm just saying. Maybe. That's a... Anyway. But um, I think that it does get you in the right direction, but it's not going to get you all the way. So I'm going to put this uh, fairly early in the pack. In fact, I'm going to call this a pickup beer. Yep. Uh, when you have yeah. no idea what their tastes are, you want to give them something good, um, but you you don't know if they're into really dark beers. Into, I think this is a good and good you know, beer that sits between all those. I think it's an everyday beer. Yeah, I, I think you could. I think you could give them this and be fairly safe that even if it's not their favorite, they're not gonna like spit it out and, and scoff at you. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I can see that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, lawnmower beer. I just I want you to write this down. This is this is my rating for lawnmower beer. Fuck okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That's it. Just fuck yeah. This is. Is a, this like the gold standard for a lawnmower this is, beer? This is the gold standard for a lawnmower beer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Rolling Rock, you're out. <laughs> Rolling Rock is out. This is this is this is it now. Uh, and it's a good Texas beer, so that always and it's helps. It's a good Texas beer, which always helps. Always and helps. while you're mowing your blue bonnets, you can look at the nice blue bonnets well, on the can. Yes, while you're committing a crime, yeah, it's still not a crime. crime. <laughs> still not a crime. Uh, all right, so uh, this pretty good beer. Yeah, yeah, so, I've, I've enjoyed it. I'm out actually now. I, I've one? been no. I've been nursing, but I'm going to get another one here in a minute. Oh so. yeah, I'll probably get one after after we're done recording. So uh, where are we going to next, John? We can split them up. Um, So I want to talk about some of the conspiracy theories. I'm just going to call it what it is. Yep. Around this. So we've gone through and I'm, I'm. I'm hoping at least one of those touched you. If not, you can look up some. There's it, so many more of these. Yeah. You could talk about the Luke, I am your father. You could talk, you could about, talk the about the Statue of Liberty. Monopoly uh, guy not yeah, having a monocle. Yeah. Curious, Curious George, no tails. Yeah. There's all kinds of these. Yeah. Anyway, so, but, you know, one of these hopefully has hit you. So you've kind of got the mindset. So here is, and it, this 
If you go to MandelaEffect.com, you shouldn't because uh, Miss... <laughs> She's a lunatic. Yeah. What the hell was that noise? Was it, Fiona? it was a raspberry. What's oh, okay. her name? Fiona Broom. Broom? With an Fiona e. Broom does not deserve your traffic, but Fiona Broom, who is this like paranormalist... She calls herself a paranormal consultant. She sounds Whatever like a Harry Potter character, is. doesn't she? She does. Fiona yeah. Broom. It's probably not even her real name. I want to talk about her. Be a great porn a star name. Yeah, we, we, we can. But she's... Ca- I'm, I'm Fiona Broom. Feeling a broom, maybe. <laughs> She's come up with this whole conspiracy theory that what's in fact happening is not some memory error happening in mass. In fact, we have somehow slipped between alternate realities and apparently do this regularly. And we and the people who remember, let's say, Shazam came from a reality where Shazam was a thing and then slipped into this one where it's not. So the history is all muddled up, but our memories are the proof that Shazam is real or that, you know, anything else. So I want to talk about one of the most popular ones in reference to this and kind of explore this, uh, the death of Mandela. Yeah, Nelson Mandela. Where yeah. got its name. Yeah, where the Mandela effect got its name. So this goes that... Uh, apparently a large group of people remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 80s. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 83, I think, is the n- date I see for most of them. And another large portion believing he died in 91, a year after he got out of prison. Yeah. Prison. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to talk about this. Maybe we are slipping between realities on a regular basis. You know, I, I can remember this. I was, uh, uh, I was just a kid. I graduated high school in 90. So, uh, and... When Mandela got out of uh, got out of prison in '91, I believe he came to Atlanta there, uh, and and I remember the, uh, the the people saying, "I thought he was dead. I yeah. thought he was dead." Uh, and 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 you know you you wonder about stuff. Of course he'd been he'd been locked up since what '61, so yeah. 27, twenty-seven years. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So I, I want to talk about. I'm actually about to throw it back to you, but I want to talk about for just a second. Yeah, '62 to '90 is what he was locked up. Yeah. yeah. If Nelson Mandela had died in an alternate reality in prison, what would the world be like? How would history be today? Yeah, wow. Well. If Nelson Mandela had died in prison, it was just an alternate reality thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think everybody who believes they're from that alternate rea- reality has to accept everything that follows from Nelson Mandela's death. So, Mike, go ahead. Nelson yeah. Mandela's dead. Yeah, uh, Nelson Mandela, if you don't know much about this guy, he was a, uh, a patriot in, in South Africa in a time period of apartheid. Apartheid lasts all the way up into the, the 90s in, in mm-hmm. South Africa. Uh, he was a, a member of the African National Congress, uh, which was a, 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 a black nationalist movement in South Africa, uh, fighting for, for black rights. And in 1962, he gets locked up, gets sentenced to life in prison, uh, for for basically interfering with with elections and and there was there were yeah, some conspiracy actions conspiracy to overthrow the state yeah there were there were actions that were done that could be easily called terroristic actions okay yeah. easily uh, so he's locked up and he stays locked up from 1962 until 1990. This man is then released by de Klerk, the the the, the white president of South Africa, largely because the the white uh, population was so overwhelmed by the black population by this point. That uh, it, it, it became necessary. The mm-hmm. clerk, the clerk seems to have been a good man. He releases him early uh, from his life sentence. Still, twenty-seven years in prison. Uh, Nelson Mandela comes out. He uh, he he is immediately he immediately uh, takes his place back over as leader of the African National Congress. He uh, works with the clerk in a presidential election in nineteen ninety-four. Nelson Mandela is elected president of South Africa in the first multi-racial election in the history of that that nation. So Mandela would, would never have been elected president of, of South Africa. At the end of one term, he chooses not to run for a second term. Instead, he, he Washington's. He, he, instead, he forms uh, the, the Nelson Mandela Foundation, where he does incredible work uh, to, to try and stop the spread of HIV and AIDS mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in Africa and throughout the world. He, uh, he negotiates peace treaties between warring African national states, wins the Nobel Peace Prize for this stuff, uh, and does all of this before for finally actually dying in 2013. Without, you know, if, if you accept that Nelson Mandela died in 91 or, or 83 mm-hmm. or anywhere in between there, none of this happens. Right. Apartheid does not break. 
Yeah, so uh, so Trevor Noah yeah. doesn't, doesn't make it over. Trevor yeah. Noah never makes it over. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has some killer stories, by the way. Yeah. He does. If he anybody's does. Interesting not stuff. Those up. I can't stand his show, but They're I like fine. him personally. Yeah. Uh, so Because uh, you guys are friends, right? Uh, well, yes. I like him personally. Trevor I've, hangs out at the house. I've met him. Night. He's great. I mean, I think he's a cool guy. <laughs> we have All a right. beer and yeah. talk about the old days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember those those apartheid days? Oh, those were the good old days, you know? It's because, never good. It's never good. Because Nelson Mandela died. Yeah. So it, <laughs> Now, you said something earlier that, that I want to argue with you a little bit. You said right. that if we accept <laughs> that, uh, that, that Mandela had died before this, we have to accept that all of this happened. I don't know that that's true. Because those people that accept or that, that, that uh, uh, believe in this, that the Mandela effect is not just mass misremembering they believe that it's actually an alternate reality they would say that no that 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 didn't happen because it's already been overwritten and all we are getting is the remnants of this old reality right but your memory either either the overriding process overwrote your memory in which case you wouldn't have remembered nelson mandela dying or it didn't and so you have to account for where that nobel peace prize actually went you have to account for those but you don't you don't because the people would say that that it never happened, that that something happened that happened that that affected reality, and the reality that would have happened never did. Yeah. So there are the people who subscribe to the Sliders idea, um, which was apparently a show in the past. Good show. It was a it was a big show. I never Fine. watched it. I didn't either. Um, where you just apparently slide from one reality to another. Um, in sort of a multiverse thing. Um, and so the people subscribing to that idea could very well agree that in the original reality, uh, Nelson Mandela did die in prison or a year yeah. after he got out of prison and none of those things happened, <coughs> but that in our reality, he didn't die and all of those things did happen. That's all yeah. well and good. That's and there's fine. just a remnant there. That's fine. There's a remnant. So they are professing... That their memory is the true record. Yeah, they from are. From the other reality. Yeah, they are. From the so other reality. In their memory, they have to then account for all of those things from the true record. No, I don't know that they do. Okay? Think about whenever you whenever you uh, rewrite a hard drive. Okay? You, you write over things. But there's always remnants left, right? Isn't there always th stuff left behind? Not really. No. Whenever so you, what, then why are you defragging a hard drive? What are you doing? Oh, defragging a hard drive... So what happens is... Isn't that remnants of old things? No. No, that's not at all. I'm that big of an idiot? So what happens is... <laughs> this is, is another one of those cases where Mike's going to be proven wrong. Is, like, let's say you have a program that needs 10 gigabytes, but you don't have it. You have two 5 gigabyte slots. Yeah. So you have a program, but it's on separate sides of the hard drive. Defragging just rearranges all the pieces all around. and okay. makes them close right. together. So, uh, but the idea here is, and obviously yeah. you've, you've proven me wrong on the technological side, but the idea here is that there's just... That there's there's one piece that's left. But so, you don't have to count for the rest of it because it was overwritten. There's just this one part that wasn't. Well, and even regardless, um, I think what you're assuming is that they not only have the memory of uh, Mandela's death, but that they also have the memory of him receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. When the thing about it is, um, I would suspect there are probably a number of people who remember him dying that don't remember him getting the peace prize that don't remember any of that stuff but and and i think unless you are um closely tied with the region or what was going on there um that it would be easy enough to um remember one big action that happened and not some other ones so they don't have to account for that i'll tell you the scariest part of this for me as I'm thinking about it, and it's, it's hitting me as we're talking about this, is if you accept this idea that you know that there are alternate realities and, and, and they can be overwritten, that would in fact mean that nothing is real. Yeah, I, no, I, I mean I agree. <laughs> that would in but, fact mean that nothing is real because everything can be can be altered. Until but you you're looking your you're looking at the situation in the micro, not the macro. Yes, there may be a person out there who remembers Nelson Mandela dying in the '80s or '91. And doesn't have a fucking clue about their asshole from their elbows when it comes to African history, the Warring Nations, and, and Nobel Peace Prize. That is absolutely a thing that a person could have happen. But 
Go to NelsonMandela.com. They're talking about millions of people. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. Millions of people. So from those millions of people, you're telling me that not a one of them has a clue Let me tell about you. any well, of the other things. If they're arguing that there was an incident that uh, caused them all to slide from this re- from the their original reality to this one, could that not have happened sometime shortly after his death? death in that reality you know there's and before he actually got out and achieved all those things and did all of that well they they do argue that there was an incident that caused that to yeah, happen yeah. and let's talk about that for just a yeah, little bit i i, I want to but, but let, let me let me point something out to you also there are those people that believe and, and, and it's not really mandela effect but there are people out there that believe that mandela did in fact die Oh, and, yeah, I've seen and, that one, too. And, and he was replaced by somebody else, and that's why we remember this. A lizard this. man. Well, I haven't seen nah, the lizard man, but he was replaced by somebody else, and he's working for some, you know, other other government. Not really Mandela effect, but it's an interesting idea yeah. anyway. Hmm. Uh, so what causes this? There is a theory out there, and it is admittedly a fringe theory, but you can find it, where they believe that the whole Mandela effect was caused by CERN. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't know what CERN is, it's, uh, it's, it's the largest... Uh, uh, the Large Hadron Collider. Is it's the CERN? largest laboratory in the world, and they developed the, the Hadron Collider. That is massive, where what they do is they take these particles and they send them around at massive speeds, and they, they, they run into each other. And we know that, uh, that they, have, they have discovered the Higgs boson particle, something that, that is colloquially called the God particle. They have found a way to make matter. Okay, it's something that is that that, that is that is bizarre, um, and they people start putting quotes together with this. They're comparing it with the Big Bang. They're saying that what they have done is essentially oh, the same man. thing that the Big Bang did. They create matter from nothing. They created something from nothing, and they talk about these micro black holes that happen, and. Again, piecing things together like like puzzle pieces, they believe that these black holes are 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 what is what is changing things. Because if you know about black hole, it's something where where the the vacuum is so strong that nothing can escape from it, even time. Everything is sucked into it, and uh, these these black holes that that have been created are are causing this Mandela effect. It's sucking thing things out. Uh, they 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 use a quote from Stephen Hawking. Uh, who's always a good person to quote <laughs> smartest man man alive when he was and never said most of the things people said he, he said. did he did uh, but Stephen Hawking talked about CERN and he warned of and this is a quote from him from a book a catastrophic vacuum decay and they talk about how this is proof that Stephen Hawking was was, was afraid of what was going on what they're not doing doing is they're not understanding what he was talking about at all. Mm-hmm. He wasn't, in fact, talking about uh, about these little black holes. He was talking about about the idea of of a of a much larger process uh, that they've taken out of out of context with this. Uh, John, you're over there smiling the and laughing. The premier skill uh, skill of conspiracy theorists uh, yeah, taking yeah. shit out of context. Uh, uh, well, I, as we demonstrated on a recent show. Yeah, we did. Uh, so, John, you're over there smiling, giggling, and laughing. Do you want to tell me why uh, why is the Hadron Collider not responsible for uh, for for the Mandela effect? Yeah, so I'm going to take this piecewise in the order. And, you know, obviously you're paraphrasing. Maybe you've said some things that weren't exactly what they said. I'm just going to debate what you said. And then if there's different pieces, we can talk about those as we go. So you first talked about the Large Hadron Collider making matter. Yeah, this is absolutely something the large that the the Large Hadron Collider is incapable of. Large Hadron Collider has never made any matter. Um, so, and and I want to talk a little bit about. I read the Divin- I, 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 I read Angels and Demons by Dan Brown. It did too. That's Mandela effect for you. Oh, uh, but no, they, they've never made matter. So, so what the Large Hadron Collider did? Um, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about particles and how particles work very briefly. So anything, so we perceive a particle, and we talked about this a little bit on our show on um, information and what's real, but anything you perceive is not in reality. I'm using air quotes here because there's a question of what is reality. What you perceive it to be. It's not shiny, it's not whatever. 
everything's made up of protons and electrons, but even if we look at those basic particles, the protons, the electrons, all the gluons and, and non-gluons, those things aren't even really what we perceive them to be. Every property that a proton has, there is a piece. It's electric charge, it's mass, it's, um, uh, its shape, its size, all of that. There is a piece of a subatomic particle, a quark, that comes together, and there is a quark responsible for every property of that, that when you put the right orientation of quarks together, you get a proton. It is an area of space that has these properties that we can interact with in, in such a way. The God particle, the Higgs boson, as it's more properly yep. called, was an elusive quark that is responsible for the property of mass and gravity. So all they did was they took some uh, uh, electrons, actually. They weren't using protons. They were using electrons, I'm pretty sure. It didn't matter. It didn't matter which one they were using. And smashed them together, causing them to break. And then looked really closely to see if they could find this uh, um, particle, this, this subatomic particle, that would have these properties required for a particle that makes mass. And so they took basically a Lego block, they threw it against the wall, and tried to find the red Lego as it fell down. So they didn't make anything. They actually broke something if they did anything. Okay. Secondly, these kinds of, of particle smashing events happen all the time. The sun is having tons of them all at the same time. Their big thing was they needed it to happen in front of the sensor. <laughs> like, you know, Lego blocks are smashed on time. I just need to catch one on camera. So they had to have it happen right there in a little so bit of space. So you're saying it's not creating a small black hole that's going to expand and, and destroy the universe. Well, and, you know, there was some theory that it, they've seen no evidence that it did. But it's quite possible that they did create a small black hole. But the thing is, something that people don't realize about black holes is black holes evaporate over time. Uh, they release this radiation. The radiation takes energy away. Is that the event that they talk about? They, they always talk about these black holes creating an event. I was reading on this earlier. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. you're referring when, to the event horizon? No, I'm no. not talking about yeah, a move. I, that, I that, that, but I, but, but, but it, might be, it might be that too. But they're talk, there's a quote in here where, from, from Hawking where he says um, that, that, that creating the Higgs boson creates an event. And they always take that out of context, and they think event means something dangerous, when really it's just a scientific term for uh, for, for what's happening here. Yeah, and, and I don't know what he's talking about. I have to read, yeah. you know, around that and, and everything. I can but, quote Shakespeare to you. I just want to point that out to our, our, our audience that they're sitting here going, uh, uh, Mike's an idiot, and John knows all the science. Yeah, well, I can quote Shakespeare, so fuck you. <laughs> but black holes, they evaporate... And the rate of evaporation is actually higher when they're smaller. So they evaporate really slow when they're really big and really quickly they when they're faster. small. Yes. Okay. So even if a micro black hole got created, it would, so I mean, it would evaporate so, so black instantly. Holes, black holes don't expand and suck the things in that are around them, is what you're saying. They do. So why doesn't a micro... I, I'm sorry, we're turning into science talk because I've got to know this. We're why so doesn't, off topic right now. I, I don't care. Why doesn't a, a, a micro black hole, uh, by, by, by sucking everything around it, just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger like they're afraid of? Yeah, so, so the reason is, so big black holes evaporate and suck in matter. Small black holes evaporate and suck in matter. The thing is, the small black holes evaporate more quickly... Faster and, than they can take matter in. Yes. Okay. So they're, they're evaporating much faster. So it's kind of like the ratio of how big your drain is versus how much water your sink puts in. Um, you know, you kind of get a clogged drain with the bigger black holes. And they're sucking a lot more because they're bigger, right? Um, so the micro black holes, even though they exist, before... They suck a lot more. We're saving that one. Yeah. Before anything else can get into them to make them, you know, bigger, they evaporate instantly. You just scared the shit out of me. I'm so yeah. sorry. So I doubt they created a black hole. There's no evidence that they did. But even if they had, um, it, it 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 wouldn't have it wouldn't have mattered. And the you know they they talk about black holes mysteriously, like it could change the space time continuum. 
There's a big fucking black hole at the center of our galaxy. Is is a space time continuum just in constant flux? Yes, that's why the Bernstein Bears thing is wrong in my, everybody's mind. Yeah, see, I see, mean, see, your evidence is actually supporting me. We have a two mile large gravitational Sorry, wave. I'm trying to be a conspiracy person here. Good luck. We have a two mile large gravitational wave detector that can barely detect the merging of the largest black holes in our universe. I, I mean, they're a long way away. Yeah, exactly. And and we're talking about one over in the Nordic countries. It's a little different. Yeah, we got a big one that is holding our galaxy together. So it's it's gravitational influence on us is much bigger than one that evaporates so quickly it can't grab a proton. I mean, I'm, I, let's just but, put things but, in perspective. Okay, I, 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 yeah. I, I don't. I'm, yeah. I could go into into. I could sit here and ask you questions all day, but we're so far off topic. Right. I'm going right. to stop because Anna's going to hit me if I don't. Point is, but when we get through, I want to talk to you because I'm a little little. But point is, the, the, it, it, I shouldn't ridic- be losing sleep over yeah, what it, CERN it, is it's, doing. It's ridiculous. It, it it would be the the equivalent of saying that if I take a laser pointer and shine at the back of your car, that the photons are going to push your car forward. I mean, yes, photons push. Yes, your car is movable. No, the photons aren't going to push your car forward. It's ridiculous. Uh, photons destroy things. I watched, I watched Star Trek. Yeah. I'm so proud of you, Mike. I, I corrected myself as I, I looked at you because you were waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me think. I did. Trek. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. All right. So that was interesting. Uh, so so Fiona, Where were we? Fiona Broom is wrong, and CERN is wrong. And is Loki admitting it right now without outright saying it? <clears throat> She um, has released two videos in the last month uh, talking about the Mandela effect scattered amongst lots of videos about ghost hunting and dousing rods and oh, things God. like that. Because that's, oh, yeah. that's she's one of those. who... Yes, oh, she's brilliant. Oh, she's God. brilliant. That's who started this whole conspiracy about different realities and everything. Yeah. Um, but she's essentially coming out right now and... Um, talking about what you should do if you suspect you are a victim, we'll call it, of the Mandela effect. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and um, and how to verify, you know, what information is correct and what isn't. Um, and without actually outright saying, look, guys, this whole, like, extra realities and sliding and other bullshit isn't really a thing is kind of coming out and saying, look, like there's definitely a phenomena where, or phenom- phenomenon where, um, phenomenon, phenomenon, <laughs> anyway, uh, where bunches of people confabulate, which is the word I was looking for what earlier. A great word. Fucking amazing word. Confabulate, um, a, a particular event in pop culture, um, similarly, but that, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything crazy happening. So she's even uh, countering Backing her off. own self. I, right I do now. want to talk about after almost ten years. Yeah, well, I at do. At least she's make, make it, Let's give credit. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. making a step. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do want to talk about now, for just a second because hand. I think where people get hung up on this, I think most people will believe. Yeah, I can remember something wrong. I remember something wrong all the time. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a leap. I think where people get hung up on this is the idea that we can all remember something wrong in the same way. Yeah. And I do want to talk about a, a little bit about the mechanics of of how that happens. Um, so I want to talk about it's one easy um, that. <laughs> That, that I've actually heard a lot of people, I, I've seen on the internet where a lot of people bought into this one, but they're not really calling it Mandela Effect because it's kind of crazy, um, that Alexander Hamilton was a president. Yeah, there's a lot of people that believe that because he's on money. Yeah, he's on yeah. money. Um, yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's yeah. the general belief. So but, is Ben Franklin. Ooh, how who long also before people, we think that believe Harriet Franklin Tubman. was president? How long before we believe that Harriet Tubman was president? I am president? so pissed about that. So just uh, don't don't even get me started on the Harriet Tubman. I, I am so pissed about that. Oh my God! I want to know which ways you're pissed about it. We'll I'm talk pissed about, about it later. The, okay. We'll talk about it later. Uh, you guys already fuck, chased a long fuck, enough fuck. rabbit hole. All right. Anyway, go ahead, black John. hole. Thank you. Now I'm angry. Anyway, go ahead. It was a black S- rabbit hole. <laughs> well, I got to make it racial. You made it racial. <laughs> so anyway, um, so. Uh, if, if we look at this and we go back to the, the story about the engrams, 
and how engrams are encoded in the mind. Most people learn. Now it's, that's engrams, E N G R A M S. I want to point that out because there's Google has engrams, engrams with just an N thing. that's something different. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to confuse our audience. Yeah. Good point. If you look at the engrams and, and how they were encoded based on what we were talking about earlier, most people, when they hear about the story of Alexander Hamilton and his race and his, his, um, his fight with Burr. Yeah. Small fight. Small yeah. fight. Yeah. They had a slight disagreement. Yeah. Petty schoolgirl bullshit. His 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 ultimate murder by Burr. <laughs> um, anyway, like Agreed. I said, petty schoolgirl bullshit. Um, if if you go back and you look at this, um, most people learn about that in history class. Yep. Where they also learn about the presidents. Uh huh. So it's probably all encoded in a section of their mind called, you know, uh, ninth grade history class, or you know wherever wherever eighth they grade. Have, yeah. eighth grade history class, sure, called eighth grade history class. And then they see this other connection, guy on money. Yeah. Most of those guys are presidents. Yeah. And it is really easy when you have the idea of presidency completely surrounding a figure to accidentally make a connection there. And as we said, we go into right mode every time we remember something. How easy would it be for an accidental little neuron to go, yeah, and all of a sudden, Alexander Hamilton is a president in your mind. You know, they did a uh, related, but 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 not not exactly. A few, I spent about fifteen years ago. I think it was USA Today, but don't quote me on it. Somebody did a big big survey of graduating high school seniors to name the five greatest presidents of all time, and Benjamin Franklin came oh, in third. Oh man, yeah. nice. President Benjamin Franklin. Again, Horror. he's on money. He's taught around the you, you know. He's talked about with the Declaration of Independence with, with Adams yep. and Jefferson around him, you know. Yeah, I think it I think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I think a lot of people look at the repetitiveness and how much it, it happens on a mass scale and say, Yeah, but this couldn't happen this many times. I actually look at it quite the opposite. You would expect it to. Yeah. I look at this and say, Ha. Proves what I've been saying all along. We are a bunch of dumb monkeys. Who do the same thing, use we're the same tricks, apes. over and over, and we just have this grand delusion that we're doing something greater and better. Grand delusion, great album by Sticks. Go ahead. Yeah, and yeah. and it's I, I think it's the fact that people don't want to release that grand delusion that that, that there's not any magic to what's happening here. Um, they believe their memories are somehow this 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 magic record. When in reality, it's not. It, 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 it's this very fallible, very easy to fuck up process. And um, it's their, their inability to release the illusion of their own greatness that is perpetuating this thing. Not uh, any kind of uh, uh, fact, fact about our, our ability to remember things. Yeah. Well, and I, I think there's another element of it um, that harkens back to our social nature mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that you start to find particularly with um, events involving large numbers of people is that individuals' memories start to change a lot whenever they hear the retelling of other people who were there. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, going back to Mandela's death itself, it, it there was um, oh, there were two events. I'm forgetting one of them now, but one of them was um, a very widely televised um, or, or the very widely televised funeral of his wife, um, Winnie Mandela. Yes, and it was batshit crazy, by the way. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> In case you guys have forgotten. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, seriously. <clears throat> Look her up one day. Crazy shit. Yes. Um, but anyway, and so the widely televised Mandela funeral um, around the same... Well... It was after he was president, but it was barely. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so here a long time back, but if you think about it and somebody says... Didn't Mandela die like in the nineties? Well, yeah, and just somebody not else that goes, Mandela. "Yeah, I uh, I remember watching the Mandela funeral yeah. on TV." And then all of a sudden, you've got two things 
connecting and and you've got two people maybe in a group of more people going oh yeah i remember that too oh yeah 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 and I, you just imagine that happening a handful of times and then all of a sudden it is a very widespread thing one of the things that businesses talk about is um you know impressing somebody so much that they go and tell your friends and they give that personal testimony of the greatness of your business is one of the best ways to draw people in, right? Um, and so you have to expect that the same thing is happening with other incidents, such as the death of Nelson Mandela. And I, I think it makes it fairly simple why a handful of confabulations turns into millions of people misremembering something. Well, and I think that, I think on that same note, another thing that happens is how these events are presented. So whenever the Shazam one got real big, I remember going online and seeing it. And the question that was asked is, do you remember the movie Shazam with Sinbad? And I think people thought back and they... they Conditioning. Shaz- yeah, they said Shazam. Oh, yeah, that Shazam movie. It was Sin- yeah, Sinbad, sure, why not? Yeah, Somewhere in the black guy, yeah, right? because they were both... <laughs> A, yeah. a producer clip that. Clip that. Yeah. I want I want some random black guy right clipped. Shazam, Kazam, <laughs> big black yeah. guys. Yeah. And then they came Amy's. to a conclusion. Yeah. They said, yeah, Shazam is real. And then they read further in the article. They said, there's no Shazam. And now their pride takes over. What do you mean there's no Shazam with Sinbad? I, I said earlier I there was. I specifically remember it. I specifically said, and I'm not wrong usually, that it was Shazam. So yeah, now they all have of to your defend memories, it. Yeah, and then all of your memories, you're taking Sinbad's face and putting it over Shaquille O'Neal's <sighs> face, and anywhere that it says the word Kazam, you're replacing with Shazam. Right. Because, by God, you've got to be right. Right. Yeah. And, and and then they read the other people who also did the same thing, and they say, ha! See, they remember it, too. They remember it. You yeah. know what it is? It's not that we're all uh, big, dumb, hairless apes that remember things poorly. It's that... Reality broke. Reality must have broke. That's the only explanation for me being wrong yeah. here. Well, and, and if you're looking at it objectively... That would be the only explanation for me being wrong. And this was the thing that drove me the fucking craziest about Fiona Broom's uh, latest video on the Mandela Effect. She's... <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> yes. So... Um, oh, other God. I wasn't sure. Shut the fuck sure. up, Mike. But anyway, and she's, so there's a point where she's like, people are saying that the Mandela effect is not a real thing. And, and she's trying to claim that people are saying that there aren't huge numbers of people confabulating the same thing. Um, When nobody's claiming that doesn't happen. It's pretty fucking clear that that happens. What they're saying is that this reality shift isn't happening. Yeah. In fact, most of the people who are, are disagreeing with the Mandela effect, but agreeing that it happens, are using the proper term mass false memory. Yeah. It's just the uh, Mandela effect's a little more clickbaity, and we want you to watch, so yeah, we right. use Mandela effect. Yeah. But anyway. Um, and, Fucking Mandela. And so she's like, Occam's razor clearly indicates ah, that, shut up. that the Mandela effect is real because all of these people remember it, and that makes sense. Anyway. Yeah, the simplest solution. Is the correct one. Yes. And so... That's not the simplest solution, though. It's not. That takes some serious jobs. Exactly. And that's my thing. I think if you're looking at one of these instances where you did... Particularly where you didn't fall subject to it. Yeah. So if I'm not looking at uh, Mandela's death or uh, Shazam or Berenstain Bears... You're looking at Curious George. Fine. If I'm looking at Curious George, um, I can look at it and go, nah, these... Occam's razor would lead you to think these people just all kind of remembered things poorly. And it's fine. And it's not that big a deal. Not Octum, some fucking re- Occam's razor is not some like blanket term for why you're infallible. Right. It has a meaning. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, think we're about ready to wrap this one up. Yes. All right. Let's do it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we've enjoyed it and we hope you have too. If you have, you can find us on uh, Patreon and you can become a patron there, get all sorts of fun perks like watching these episodes live a week or two before they actually come out. Yeah, there's a little bit of a lag right now while we're playing catch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there is. Um, also, lots of other fun uh, 
bonuses that yeah, you get yeah. as a patron. You can sleep with me for 500 bucks. Call that a bonus if you want. <laughs> um, <laughs> Where can they get this swag? Hey, let me ask Mike, if there was someone who wanted to give us $500 but was terrified at the idea of sleeping with you, just hypothetically. I would nap with you too. Could they give the five hundred dollars and then not sleep with you, or is it required? Well, if you give okay, five hundred dollars, he, he, here's the fact: if you want to give us five hundred bucks and not sleep with me, that's fine. That's fine. My feelings are going to be hurt, but but I, I, I can accept that. John will sleep with him in your stead. Yeah, John will sleep with me instead, and it'll all be okay. Yes. So anyway, I'm taking um, one for the team here. <laughs> you can also get killer SPP swag at uh, Teespring. Just go on teespring.com and search Six Pack Philosophy. You can also search Six Pack Philosophy on all of these social media, and you'll find us yeah, pretty much everywhere. Cool stuff. And cool if stuff. all that is too much for you, you can simply reach down and click that subscribe button. Like, and subscribe, watch us. share, all the things. Yeah. yeah, Just watch us on the regular feed like everybody else. Everybody, everybody else. else. So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, and we hope you have too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 